You are listening to An Awakening Podcast. This is an adult conversation about local, worldly and otherworldly topics. Be prepared, there is some swearing in the podcast. Well, firstly, please, if you know me at all, and I've been told to have this sort of Belfast accent, I don't see it at all, but if you know me, please don't be posting my name up on bloody line, okay? Just let's go with this. Let's do this. So, welcome to An Awakening. And the whole point of this podcast is basically for to have a bit of adult discussion now and again. You know, let's talk about things like fucking adults instead of being like kids. Where, like, I don't know about you, but I meet people and we're like 98, 99% the same thoughts, the same way, everything. But then you just disagree with one wee thing and you're Hitler. Well, no, we're not. This is a place for, I open a space up for discussion, adult conversation. And that's, you know... <laughs> All these people that just want to fight and argue and call names. No. Adult discussion. And let's get on with it. The thing is, I want people out there to suggest subjects to me. What interests you? Things that interest me is like alternative healing. We'll be getting people on talking about different experiences with different types of alternative healing. Or for cancer, for, you know, for depression, for different things. With a few people lined up to talk about the corruption in Northern Ireland. We're going to be talking about police corruption, judiciary. We're going to be talking about NAMA and decades like Ian Paisley Jr. who think he can do whatever the fuck you like. We'll be talking about the cabal in general, the big picture. Let's talk about the Masonic's influence in Northern Ireland. Wouldn't that be interesting? We'll talk about the Irish language. Now, I'm a poet, right, from Belfast. But I love the Irish language. You know, and to see people, you know, cutting it down. Hey, Jesus, what are you on? You know, it was Protestants, it was actually Presbyterians that kept Irish language going in this country. You know, come on, let's have a discussion about this. I'm hoping to invite the likes of Linda Irvine over, if possible. She's a lovely woman, and Mary, and different people in my life who, Protestants, who've actually enjoyed the Irish language. You know, I get great love from hearing my friends singing in Irish, a friend from Donegal. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful languages in the world, with Sanskrit and Punjabi. And what I'm going to talk about is improving services around Belfast. It's shocking. You know, mental health issues, you know, any, any sort of help at all for children in need, or like children with, with issues, with autism and all. Let's talk about it openly. And let's just have, but the thing about this, let's have a bloody good laugh. Take a piss out of each other. Take a piss out of ourselves, more importantly. And just get on with it and have a laugh. I'm going to talk about my journey with um, various plants. Eight years ago, I was was so miserable I just wanted to knack myself. I didn't see any way out. But over the last eight years, I've gone through, oh, I've done about 45, 50 ayahuasca ceremonies. And I know I'm going to be talking about things that you don't know about, but hopefully this will broaden your mind, give you an interest. I took ayahuasca once and I knew, after I took it, I'd never gone and act myself. And that was important to me. <laughs> I'm a family. You know, and I'll talk about the different journey with different plants, different medicines, different things that have helped me. I'm not saying they're for everybody. But there is help out there. In the first few of going out, you know, we'll be talking to different people. That's my wee dog, Barney, you hear rattling about there. Sit down, sit down, good boy, good boy, sit. Good boy, that's uh, a boy, lay down. You'll be getting to know Barney too. He's always fiddling about, as long as he isn't farting. To me, the mental health issues, and all, you know, are very underfunded, you know, and, you know, young people are in trouble now, and, Maybe this, if it helps one person, I'm happy. That's enough, I'll, I'll, job done, I'm happy. But first we, we'll be talking about is my journey with ayahuasca. When I, when I first heard of it, uh, it was a guy called Bruce Perry, he was doing a thing called uh, Tribe. And then after that I heard Sting talking about it. And 
The misconception about it is that I thought I'm going to be surrounded by real weirdos here. But I've done ayahuasca with doctors and solicitors and reporters and uh, business people. All pe- people from all walks of life, not just hippies. You know, although I'm a, I'd say I'm an ad <laughs> I'm glad I like that title, but, you know, it, it's not just one section of, of the community at all. It's right across the board. I've met beautiful commanders as a surgeon for many years, and, you know, I've met millionaires and people that have them today or all sorts. And uh, the misconceptions about it is that you're going there to enjoy yourself. <laughs> no, you're bloody not. But I'll go into more detail when I'm talking about that. And, uh, yeah, and we'll be talking about all sorts of different plants and different things I've tried. And we'll be inviting people who want to maybe tell their story on different things. There's things I haven't tried, you know. I haven't tried different cacti, which are meant to be very healing. Um, although I will be doing that hopefully soon. And um, I'll do a report on that. Once you take a waska, the... the Things like the church, you know, the royals, people of so-called importance, that all falls away and you see what for what it is and it's absolutely bullshit. You know, the only thing that's important in this world is you. Not some big chase telling you what to do, but you leading your life the way you want to lead it in peace and harmony with the planet. And they don't want that. Because they're not going to be able to pollute the way they do. They're not going to be able to make the money the way they do. They're not going to be able to keep that sense of power over you. You know, that's why they killed so many people to try and hide this over the years. You know, in South America, North America, the Aborigines, you know. And you know, what, what we're talking about, I'm going into detail, uh, you know, of each, of each people and what they used. You know, North America, it was the Pio Cacti and the San Pedro cacti. In uh, South America it was ayahuasca and the Aborigines it was our dream time. They had to kill that. They had to get rid of that. You know, killed 40 million Aborigines, 100 million North American Indians and over 100 million South American Indians to try and keep us away because power structures fall apart when you see through it and it's all bullshit. Nobody's going to bow to these people anymore and they can't have that so They'll use everything they have to keep it away from you. Dimethyltryptamine DMT. DMT is produced with a pineal gland. You get a few rushes of it in life. 38 weeks gestation. That's when you get your sex. That's why men are putting born with nipples, because up until that stage you don't have a sex. When you get your rush of DMT, that gives you your sex. The next time you get DMT is the day you're born to help you come into this new environment and the next time you get it it's the day you die it's to carry you through to your next journey you will get wee touches of DMT through life that's where deja vu comes through and these wee moments of what the hell was that we all got them you know I, I, I watched documentaries it was a great one called The Spirit Molecule which is made by doctors it wasn't uh, hippies it was uh, Dr. Rex Dreisman and his team put up and they done laboratory controlled experiments on dimethyltryptamine. And they've known about, oh, everybody's known about dimethyltryptamine for thousands of years. That's what the Buddha's heart represents. That's what, uh, it's pineal gland because when it's inside your brain, I've actually met a surgeon at an ayahuasca ceremony who explained to me that when he actually opened up a pineal gland, had a look at it. And it just looks like a small pine cone. That's why you see these ancient uh, pictures of Sumerians and different people, uh, Anunnaki, and they always have a pine cone in their hand. That's a representation of what it is. There's a pineal gardens in the Vatican, and it's all big pine cones. You know, they've known about this, but they have to keep you away from it, because once you experience it, it's life-changing. I'd heard about DMT, they say, different, listen to different people, but i never actually met anybody who'd taken it. Until I took it, and uh, I sat down. I took one puff of this white powder and a, and a pipe, and my life changed. It was just the most beautiful, wonderful experience I've ever had. I've experienced and seen 
first of all, you see the colours. You'll see colours that you've never seen before. I know it sounds nuts, but when you look at the light spectrum, the light spectrum's like, say, from arm to arm, that's a light spectrum. We see one ten billionth of that, that one wee tiny bit in the middle. A bird sees more than one side than we do, and bees see more than the other side than we do. You know, and what people don't realise is that we're living in Plato's cave. And Plato's caves, basically, what they did was, in Plato's cave, was they got two or three young boys, and what they did was, from their babies, they tied them up in chains, facing the wall, and they had blinkers on them so they couldn't see behind them. And all they could see was a wall their whole life. And their food appeared in their f- in the ground before their chains were released. They could crawl down, eat their food, were back up the wall. That's all they ever seen. And then there was a fire lit behind them. So on the wall they seen shadows of the fire and shadows of themselves in the wall. And people would have walked by quietly behind them and they would have seen their shadows. And that was their whole life. And that was my life until I took the MT. Because one of the boys, when he became a young man, escaped from Plato's cave and he got outside. And he's seen the world, he's seen the sky, and he's seen animals and wee dogs and birds and women and other men. And he near shed himself. Yeah, holy fuck. And he got back in to tell his mates and he says, Outside, you want to see it? It's fucking suddenly beautiful. So they killed him. Because I thought he went nuts. But that's what DMT is like. Because when you come back from a DMT trip and you look around you, this is Plato's Cave. This is like black and white TV in the 60s compared to DMT. Terence McKenna, he says, he says, imagine you'd been on mushrooms and acid all your life and you'd taken all these trips and you'd done everything, experienced all sorts. He says, a DMT trip is like adding every acid trip and every mushroom trip you've ever had Multiply them all together by a million times and you're still not close. And he's right. I've seen people have lost in my life and have come in contact with them in DMT. And I know people are going to think, I'll get off your number. I don't give a fuck what they think. Try it and then tell me what you think. To me, it was one of the biggest experiences I've ever had. And the beauty of it and the love you feel is unbelievable. And there's entities, and there's, I don't know what they are, to be honest with you, them. But I just have had the most beautiful experiences with it. That's such a simple thing. It only lasts six, ten minutes. Of it. Because your body produces it naturally, it eats it up very quick. So, you know, there's no hangover, there's no calm down. You can get on your motorbike ten minutes after you take it and ride home. And, uh, yeah, that was a... Some of the greatest experiences I've ever had is DMT. I had a few scary ones too, you know. But the scary ones is easy. You just blow love at them, they shit themselves. And, uh, yeah, DMT is just one of the most remarkable substances I've ever experienced. Magic mushrooms. Um, there's different types of magic mushrooms. You know, there's dozens all over the world, you know. The most amazing one, I suppose, is Alameda Muscaria, which people know as the big red jobbies with the white dots that the, you see gnomes sitting on and your toes going, you're going to die if you look at it. A lot of balls. That is about the hardest one of them all. Yeah, it is. You know, it, it's um, it's a big journey. You take Alameda Muscaria or Fly Agaric, as it's known, 12 hours, you're gone, you know, you're really gone. It was actually used by the Vikings, uh, the berserkers, which is the elite guard of the king, the Vikings, and always the first in the beach. Because it, it's very toxic and it, it makes you you're very sick when you go, have a lot of shits. So one of the, the berserkers would have taken the Anamita Muscaria, then he pissed into a... Uh, a flag and whatever had then, and haunted the next one. He drank it well, and then he pissed in the net. It just was haunted down the line. Everybody pissed in the ring and haunted the next one. But the first guy he took all the poison, so he didn't have to go into battle. It was also made more famous by the Samai tribe up in Lapland and uh, Finland and that. And the Samais, their shaman came 
on the 25th of December. And he came dressed in red and white outfit. And when he collected the animated mascarias, the way a ton, they're, they're very wet. I don't know if you, when I was a kid, I used to run and hit them a good boot. You know, I couldn't get over the weight of them because they were full of water. So what he did was he hung them up in the pine trees. That's where Christmas decorations come from. But he used to send the children in under the pine trees looking for them coming out of the ground. They look like eggs. And some of them are red and some of them are golden. That's where your golden egg come from. You know, that's where egg hunts come from. When the Same uh, shaman went up to the, the yurts that these people lived in, on the 25th of December, you didn't get in the door. You had to climb up the yurt and climb down the smoke hole. That's where Santa comes in. That's when the locals collected themselves, they hung them up in stockings above their stockings above the fire. That's where your Christmas stocking comes from. You could go on and on. It's a Same tribe that, that all this all came from. But they used them, and the, the shaman would have taken the mushrooms and then he'd have pissed in the cup or whatever and handed the head of the household. he done the same, pissed in the hand of the wife and then the kids got it and then they're all having a jolly old time. And what it does is it connects you with everything in the universe. It connects you with the trees, the birds, the drops of water. It connects you to everything. And it can be very, very beautiful but it can also be very brutal in a way because it shows up your flaws. It lets you see what a complete fucking half wit you are half a time. And, you know, it lets you see your mistakes and where you're going wrong and your thinking. It's about the heavy, dirtiest one of them all. Um, it has a different chemical composition than the other one. There's still the same ones. It's more a masculine type thing. It's, um, yeah, not for the faint hearted. You go on the ordinary magic mushrooms, you get a, ve- a vast range of them. We've got all our wee, our wee liberty caps here that grow in Ireland, you know. But then you've got other ones now you can get from all around the world, from Mexico, where you get beautiful ones like Golden Teacher will give it a lot of visuals, and it's, it's amazing. And then you get through, like Moby Deck, which is a deeper thing, and you get ones like Coffee and Assembly, because they look like big decks. And all sorts of different mushrooms all around the world, and the local people have been taking them for thousands of years. You know, this is part of us. You've got this this theory now, the stone monkey theory, that they reckon that through evolution, we were up in the trees. There was no mushrooms up fucking trees. And it was only when the apes actually went down onto the plains and started going about and hugging and then the fuck, what's this? And then they got off their trees and uh, on the uh, mushrooms. And they reckon that that was actually part of our switching on to what we are now it's this it's called the stone dip theory if you look it up uh, Terence McKenna is a great um great man for that and the mushrooms you know they've been used right for they're actually using them all around the world now in relation to PTSD uh, and different ailments mental you know people with mental health issues you know and they're finding great success amazing success um, I know quite a few people myself who have taken uh, mushrooms for all sorts of different, you know, depression and stuff. And fucking magic. <laughs> no, it's not just a name. There's a couple of warnings for mushrooms, you know. Don't take them in a party atmosphere. You're not made for that. This is like a religious sacrament in a way, you know, or a, a sacrament of some description. Fuck religion, but, you know, it's... Um, it's not to be taking them lighthearted. It's not to be taking a party, Zach Nabolics. Uh, I've seen guys taking them in fucking ACDC concerts and all, for God's sake. The best way to take mushrooms is on your own. And if you're going to take them, don't mess about. Get yourself five grams dried, put it in a wee, any glass, drop an orange juice and knack it. Life-changing experience. The worst thing's going to happen, you're going to have a fucking great experience. Yeah, I don't, you know. Some people will maybe throw up or something, you know. It's so what, you know, he cares. You know. What happened was that it was really taken off and we're using it a lot with Vietnam vets and all. But then it was like a Nixon, you know, that fucking lunatic uh, that really stopped all that, all the stuff on you know, experiments, you know. And uh, they were doing experiments then with, with LSD, with DMT, with okay, mushrooms, all sorts of things. But Nixon, on the orders of his masters, who, who owned the pharmaceutical companies, 
he hugged the head that in the head and it's been castigated ever since but now it's starting to get a lot of uh, a lot of purchase on, on different venues you know with psychiatrists are using it and, you know was with uh, therapies one thing about this podcast is and i want this you know we're going to be going into some things and, you know, and it's going to be, we're talking about fucking corruption and horrible shit. But at the same time, it's important for us to try and come up with fucking ideas. You know, and I want you to, you know, be part of it. If you have any ideas for how to brighten things up or to help in any thing, anything we we'll talk about, let me know. Get in touch. If you want to come on and have, well, it's me and you, we'll sit and have a chat. If you've something to talk about, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's important to you, it's important to other people in, in Belfast, Northern Ireland, in the world, whatever. So get in touch. Let's have a chat. It doesn't matter what it's about. Okay? <laughs>